Zord Rider Transformers reviews and toy related chat Zord Rider Zord Rider Hello everyone, it's Zord Rider here and I'm here with another Transformers review but this is a very special review because I've hit 400 subscribers actually at the time this video is made it's about 420 I hit 400 just before TFN but of course with everything that went on with that event I haven't had a chance to do a video so I thought today I would do a AG1 review to celebrate the fact that there's 420 odd people that that like watching my channel um, so thank you to every single one of you that subscribed it's crazy to think only a month ago just over a month ago I had 300 so I genuinely wasn't expecting to make another one of these videos so soon but what I thought as it is a special event today I would review a very special toy and this is a special toy that I picked up at TF Nation this year and it was given to me by Ross and Riley so this is Generation 1 Pretender Bludgeon. Um, lovely figure, um, but before I get into the details of it, when Ross and Riley gave me this figure, they said I was a little bit dirty and dusty and could do with a bit of clean and restoration. So I videoed me doing that. So uh, what I've decided to do with Bludgeon here is not, not restore any of the paint on him. Uh, there's a few chips here and there, but I've decided not to. I kind of like the character on it. You can see there is a bit of dirt on his gun and over his body so simply what I'm going to do is just there's no metal parts in these figures I believe I'm just simply going to let these soak in some warm soapy water I'm doing this in a bowl but normally I'll do it over the sink and then basically I'm just going to submerge the body in the water give it a good scrub with an old toothbrush here and yeah let's see how he comes out so here is bludgeon after his nice bath he's come up really really well look how clean that gun is look how vibrant the orange is and his skull actually some of the chips are actually just pieces of dirt look how clean he is i mean there's a couple of chips here and there on the paint but i'm not too bothered about those at the end of the day this guy is absolutely beautiful so here is the lovely bludgeon um as you can see um, all nice, clean and shiny. Um, I did try and clean the body in that bowl, but unfortunately it didn't fit. Um, and it's very hard to scrub it one-handed. I didn't want to uh, film a lot of it, but I did in the end put him in the sink and give him a good, good soak. But you get the principle. Washing up liquid, hot water and a good toothbrush will get off the majority of dirt. Any stubborn stains, uh, I'd suggest using a little bit of lighter fluid and the same with sticker residue. Speaking of stickers, um, I was going to order some repro labels for him. But I don't think he actually came with any originally on, on all the stock photos I've seen of the original G1 Bludgeon. There isn't any stickers on there, which is a bit odd really. But then Octopunch seems to be the same as same as Stranglehold, so... I don't know, maybe they didn't have them, which is a bit odd, really. Um, but there you go. But let's get into the figure itself. As you can see, there's some lovely detail. A wonderful samurai uh, character with a skull head. Um, the only odd thing I feel about this toy is it didn't come with a samurai sword. It comes with a gun and a tank turret, which is a bit odd, really, considering the characterisation of this figure. But as you can see, he's such a beautiful figure. Probably one of my, the best pretenders I own. I mean, I'm a massive Octopunch fan, but this guy's probably taking the number one spot. Uh, as you can see, uh, his helmet does remove, and he's got a lovely, nice, clean noggin. As I said in the other clip, all those, those what I thought were paint chips, have all come off. Um, it just must have been some stubborn dirt. Um, but his helmet can come on and off. He's gone. Nice and clean now. Uh, can also detach and take off. And this tank turret here is actually part of the Pretender inside. It doesn't store within the figure. Um, it just stores as like an extra weapon. And there's a port only on the left arm for that, not on the right. Articulation-wise, his arms can do a full 360. And that's about it for this chap. Um, that's, that's all he can do. But it was the same with all the Pretenders. That was the only articulation in those arms. Um, so, if we take off his helmet... Split the figure in two. 
We then have a little fellow inside. Now, I've got an interesting story about this. Well, kind of interesting. Uh, at the f last AA, I think it was, I was rummaging through a box of bits underneath one of the stores. And I spotted this fella missing everything. And I thought, oh, that's bludgeon. I haven't got a bludgeon. And I literally went to grab it. And a young lad picked it up. Um, and uh, he bought it. So I never got it. But of course, thanks to Ross and Ronnie, I've now got a bludgeon. So as you can see, he's kind of half a tank at the moment. And that's because the tank turret fits into a port on top. And that is the tank mode. You do get a bit of articulation on the tank turret rotation, which is good. Um, and it's just a really nice little tank. Um, I would say homage is Generation 2 uh, Megatron, but of course this came before that. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it was loosely based on him with a bit of, with the purple and the green, who knows. But it's a lovely little inner robot. I really prefer this line of pretenders, the, the kind of smaller ones, the bludgeons, the octopunches. Because the, the inner robots were so cool. Um, now the only downside with this is of course it is parts forming. For those of you who don't uh, don't like parts forming. Uh, you can untab the, the turret from this section. I'll put those down a second. You then flip this section around. And push this section up to reveal the little man's head. What I tend to do with this is put, put it in the port on the back. And then what you do is you just put the gun in his hand and we've got a lovely little inner bludgeon figure. Uh, articulation is very limited on this. The arms can do a full 360 if you remove the backpack. If not, it is restricted by that. Um, and that's it. That's the only articulation. But to be honest, it's the only articulation you need for these. Um, nice bit of paint on the face. I like the brown and green colours. Um... There's of course been a, a number of incarnations of Bludgeon where the tank has been used as an alt mode. I just think it's it, it's a really nice figure. It's a really cool concept, and I used to used to I say I used to read the Marvel comics, but I used to look at the pictures when I was younger. And Bludgeon, of course, was a free, uh, was a major character in, in some of those story arcs. So he's he's such a cool cool figure. So that's Generation One Bludgeon. Um, He's an amazing figure. I'm so pleased to have him in my collection. He's, he's a figure I've wanted for a while. Um, but of course, this wouldn't have happened without Ross and Riley. So I just want to say thank you again to, to you guys for, for making this review happen and making Bludgeon part of my collection. Thank you to every single person who subscribed to me. Thank you to every person who watches my videos. Uh, if you've got any suggestions of videos you want to see, reviews, just topics of chat, then let me know in the comments below. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, check me out on Twitter or Instagram if you want to see some of my photos or my tweets. And I'll catch you again soon.